In this video, I'm going to talk about distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. At the end of the video, you'll be able to answer all of these questions. Let's start with talking about frame of reference. To describe motion accurately and completely, you need to know what your frame of reference is first. An object is in motion if it changes position relative to a reference point. A good reference point is something that stays stationary, like maybe a sign, a tree, or a building. Something that's not actually moving is the best type of reference points. Whether or not an object is in motion depends on the reference point you choose. So let's think about this. If a person is walking 5 kilometers per hour and the train is moving 80 kilometers per hour with respect to the ground, how fast is the person going with respect to the ground? So in that case, we would add the two together, 80 plus 5 to give 85 kilometers per hour. But if we said, in respect to the train, how fast is the person walking? then they're only going 5 kilometers per hour. So is the speed of the ball different relative to the pitcher, the truck driver, and the jet pilot? So whenever you think about this, why or why not would it be different depending on what it is relative to? Just like in past units, we often specify the motion of an object by using a set of coordinate axes. We choose the x-axis as the line along which motion takes place, and if an object is dropped, motion is vertical, and so we use the y-axis. Now let's talk about distance. Distance is how far an object travels. This is not depending on direction, so it is a scalar quantity. Alright, so imagine this ant, and it's crawling along a ruler. Notice that the ruler is in centimeters, and it is going to be crawling three centimeters. So what would the distance be of the ant? Well, it would be three centimeters. In this example, the ant is crawling back. Again, the distance does not depend on the direction. So if it did, we would say a negative three, but because distance is a scalar quantity, we're not going to have a direction. So we're still just going to say that it's three centimeters. Displacement is like distance, but we've added a direction to it. So this becomes a vector quantity. All right, so displacement equals the final position minus the initial position. So we're just trying to find the change in the length. So delta x uh, is your change in for the formula, is your x final minus your x initial. We could also use this for any of the other axes. All right, so in order to define displacement, we have to have a direction added to that. So it might be a positive or negative, uh, north, south, east, west, or sometimes you'll see it in an angle. Earlier, when we talked about the ant walking, we said that it went three centimeters. That was a distance. So to make it displacement, I would have to say that the ant walked three centimeters east. An object's distance traveled and its displacement aren't always the same though. In this example, again, the ant is walking to the right, so we're going to add a positive to that to become displacement. So its distance is 3 centimeters, but its displacement is a positive 3 centimeters. Looking at this example again, from before, distance is still 3 centimeters, but because the ant is going left, we've got a direction, so we're going to say it's a negative 3 centimeters. Now look at this example. In this example, the ant walks from 0 to 5 and then decides to turn around and backtrack to the 3 by going 2 more centimeters. So distance, we just add those up because that's how far it walked. 5 plus 2 equals 7. But for displacement, we have to look at its original position and its final position, and those are the only two values we're looking at. Well, its final position is at 3 centimeters, and its original position was at 0. So we say 3 minus 0 is giving me a positive 3 centimeters because uh, the 3 is to the right of the 0. 
Now let's look at this example. So an athlete is going to run around the track that is 100 meters long three times and then stop. So let's talk about the distance compared to the displacement. So this person that ran around the track three times might be pretty tired, but when we look at the displacement, he didn't go anywhere or she didn't go anywhere. So the displacement is zero meters because our final position and our original position are in the same spot. But our distance is 300 meters because we are able to calculate the actual distance that was completed. All right, so when we're calculating speed, the rate at which an object is moving, it is going to also be scalar because we're going to use distance, which is the scalar value, and we're going to say distance divided by time equals speed. All right, like distance, speed does not depend on a direction. Now if a car drives 100 meters in 5 seconds, what's the car's average speed? Well, our equation is speed equals distance divided by time. So 100 meters divided by 5 seconds is going to give me 20 meters per second. This example says a rocket is traveling at 10 kilometers per second. How long does it take the rocket to travel 30 kilometers? Our equation is that speed equals distance over time. So our speed is 10 kilometers per second. Our distance is 30 kilometers. So what is our time? And my units match up, so I don't need to convert anything. So I'm going to say then 30 divided by 10 is going to give me 3 seconds. Velocity is a lot like speed, but it's speed with a direction. So because we have this direction, we're using displacement divided by time. So my velocity is that change in my x or y, whichever one the direction I'm going, divided by my time. If we go back to our Ant Explorer, then the distance was 7 centimeters, but the displacement was a positive 3 centimeters. So if we look at the average speed, it would be 7 centimeters divided by 5 seconds equals 1.4 centimeters per second. If I'm looking at the velocity, the average velocity, notice I have that positive for my direction, positive 3 centimeters divided by 5 seconds gives me a positive 0 0.6 centimeters per second. Now let's talk about acceleration. Acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. It can result from a change in velocity, increase or decrease, a change in direction, or a change in both. Acceleration is equal to that change in velocity divided by the total time. Notice we're using velocity and not speed. So that means that acceleration is also a vector quantity. In this example, they're using speed and velocity interchangeable. But whenever you're doing the calculations in your activity, you want to make sure that you use velocity, meaning that you have to have a direction in the end. In this example, it says, as a roller coaster car starts down a slope, its speed is 4 meters per second, but 3 seconds later at the bottom, its speed is 22 meters per second. So what is its average acceleration? All right, so we know that our initial speed is 4 meters per second, our final speed is 22 meters per second, and we also know that our time is 3 seconds. When we plug it into this equation, acceleration equals final speed minus initial speed divided by time. We're going to say 22 meters per second minus 4 meters per second, all divided by 3 seconds. So the acceleration is 6 meters per second squared. The roller coaster's average acceleration is 6 meters per second squared down. So you need to make sure you get that direction in there to have an acceleration because it is a vector quantity. On this slide, we're looking at an acceleration graph. So on the left or the y-axis, we're going to have our velocity. On the x-axis, because it's our independent variable, is going to be time. When we're looking at these graphs, if it's got a slope going upward, 
then the object is accelerating. It's increasing in speed. Now, acceleration can still happen if you're changing position. So even though that object is moving at a constant speed, it still has acceleration because it is changing position. And that was one of those possibilities. All right, and then as you see the slope going down, then you can tell that the object would be decelerating. In this graph, we can tell that the cyclist is increasing in speed at a constant rate. Now, if it was even a steeper slope on this line, we would know that they were actually accelerating even at a greater rate. So the more steep that the slope is, the higher that acceleration is. This graph that you're looking at is a distance versus time. So we're looking at a speed graph instead of the acceleration graph. All right, so it's got distance on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. And you can tell this curved line tells me that they are speeding up, which also means that they are accelerating. Now if you go back to the beginning of this video and look at those uh, questions on that second slide, hopefully you should be able to answer all of them. In the next video that you'll be watching, you're going to learn more about projectile motion.